Welcome back. This is Matt Yasa with the new Glass Science sign today. I'll be doing a frit technique. That's not really a traditional one. And I'll get more into that later, but right now I'll spin this back and forth really, really fast. Give us some outward force to help pull those walls out and make a funnel here for the glass frit. To finish that up, I'm gonna go ahead and heat up a nice wide band, a nice big area to pull out. And that will give me the gradient or the gradual slope for the rest of the funnel. I'll go ahead and pull it out into a nice little string here and snip it off at the end with my towel snips. I got those at the hardware store. Starting out, it can help out to kind of improvise with some of your tools when you're on a budget. I do recommend uh, when it comes to graphite tools to buy the graphite rods and then get sandpaper and then just sand down your own tools. And you'll see there I went ahead and just broke down a bunch of tubes and I'll heat up the ends to blow out a bunch of vials. And to see more of that cutting process, I would recommend the glass chain video. It's a video where I make a chain necklace, actually the one you're seeing me wear right here. And if you do like the chain and wondering where can I get one, well, I'm actually giving this one away in the upcoming contest. Kind of a promotional giveaway, and it begins somewhere in either mid-October or for sure at the start of November. I have a new torch coming in next week, but after that, it's all going to be about the giveaway. Those vials were pretty quick to do. It's just a quick heat, a puff, and rotate to keep it from slumping, and you have it done. And now with that funnel on the top of the tube, I'm just going to alternate between red and blue to give it this cool stripe pattern. Now the frits are basically just ground up glass. Uh, you could make frit yourself at home uh, just with a hammer. <laughs> uh, but here it comes in different grades. They do sort it through like a micron filter and you'll get anything from a coarse kind of like a rock salt to a very fine, um, like a sugar or even like a dust. But you do want to take extra caution uh, while working with frit, especially the finer frit, because you don't want to breathe it in. And, and you def definitely don't want to make it with a hammer. Uh, this is a joke. And ideally you want to heat up one end and get it completely molten to start pushing the air out of the frit and work your way all the way up the tube and just completely melt the entire thing in. But today I'm working with uh, trying this different technique, just kind of experimenting here. Here I'm kind of heating up the whole thing gradually to a nice working temperature before I close it up. But like I said, normally you want to work from one end to the other and melt it all the way through. And with the prep work done, I'm going to go ahead and start in with the letters for the sign. I've just been heating up wide areas, giving it some slow bends. And with that last bend there, you should be able to tell it's going to be an S. I'm going to get a little bit more uh, curved before I take off the punty. Now, if you're wondering what happened to the last glass science sign I had behind me, uh, it broke in the rocket tube demo. I had a five foot tube I was kind of swinging around and I accidentally knocked it real good. I didn't plan to incorporate as much into the videos and into the channel banner, uh, but I did. And I thought it would be a good idea to update that too. So uh, make sure you check out the new YouTube banner I have for the channel. It shows some of the work that I do and that I sell here locally. And one thing I wanted to talk about real quick is uh, perspective or outlook. You know, artists uh, usually will kind of look at their, their, what they make and value it a certain way. I've come to kind of change my own perspectives and outlooks on uh, what I do. And especially how I value my own work. Because I remember before I would want to find a really nice piece for someone. 
So I would kind of look for, I would look at all the imperfections and all the flaws, and that would essentially kind of blind me from, you know, all the good aspects. So my brother would come and say, you know, a coworker wants a piece for like an anniversary gift or something or a birthday. And so then I'd say, let's pick out three of the best ones here and take it to him and let me know which one he wants. And so then he comes back with uh, three times the amount of money. And he says, well, he wanted them all. I'm like, oh, well, which one was his favorite? You know, that, that way I can kind of know what to make next. And he's like, I don't know. They were all good. So, I mean, that's kind of an example I wanted to throw out there, kind of just a life story, because uh, it really does pertain to life a bit. You know, when you have a, a weird outlook or a kind of a weird lens, then you just get this, like, negative, uh, distorted image, you know. And I have my G almost complete here. And you'll see me, I look at the work a lot and I tend to just get your know, mental images, kind of build the project in my head. You know, I rarely write anything down or use paper. It just kind of slows down the process for me. Unless it's uh, math or geometry. But even then I prefer to graph or chart things out. I just prefer kind of the visual perspective, I guess. And now with that finished, I'll go and let you check out these letters, the G and the S. You can see the frit is not actually fully melted in yet. It gives it kind of a different kind of a effect. And with that done, I'll go ahead and begin to melt on clear glass bridges, which will connect each letter together and then connect each word together after that. Now these bridges are very important to get them nice and properly melted in, a very strong connection because it's gonna hold the entire piece together. You can see here I pull the bridge out a little bit once I connect it, and then I'm gonna melt that clear rod off, a little swirling action, and put on the next letter. And it's very, very important to hold the glass still while it's setting up. That includes any time you're working with a punny, especially a hot punny. You know, if you're wiggling the punny around as it's setting up, then you're gonna induce a lot of stress and it's gonna break pretty easily. And when I say setting up, I mean you know going from liquid glass to solid glass. But here you can see the finished glass word. Now I'm gonna start on the science word, beginning with the S. Now if there's something you'd like to see me make or maybe a technique demonstrated, Make sure to comment that down in the section below. But then I do have some younger viewers watching, so there are some things I might not make. Just to let you guys know ahead of time. Oh, and what is that? Is that an aperture mug from the game Portal? <laughs> That's right. I'm a big uh, Valve fan. Let's go ahead and pull some extra glass off to make the bridge. Oh, and that one just broke off. And that's kind of part of the process real quick. I wanted to point out you do run into cracks and breaks now and then, and a lot of times you can make a repair and recover it. And it's really good to work on that instead of just trying to throw it away. But then uh, also practicing to prevent that kind of damage from happening, which usually involves reheating areas, just keeping things at the working temperature. If things get too cold and then you go in to reheat it real quickly or you work another area up real hot, and you kind of splash heat over, the wild variants will cause uh, the cracks and stuff to start happening. Now I'm gonna start melting in some bridges to connect both words together to create one solid uh, sign. Like I said before, it's good to hold things up and get a nice visual to see if uh, everything's gonna work together. Because a lot, a lot of times the proportions are off, you know, something's a little bit smaller or larger than the other one. Some of the hardest things to make as a glass blower would be matching earrings or matching whatever, just because you know getting two of the exact same thing is so hard. There's always a little bit of variance in the size here or there. 
or color placement just because you know, your hand movements are a little bit different each time. Now there are some molds or techniques that are more of kind of a cookie cutter process. They give you more of a, an, an exact result in the end. But a lot of my work uh, focuses mainly on making things uh, more individually or one at a time. And I'm always kind of trying new techniques or varying the techniques I know up. So like each of my pieces are always kind of unique. Now for the hard part, which is going to be connecting both of these bridges up at the same time, I went ahead and preheated one of the bridges so when I connect the other one, it'll be ready to go. So as one bridge begins to solidify and cool down, I won't be able to move around the other one to get it melted in the position I need. So that's why I leave it a little bit liquid and then I can go in on the other one and still be able to move it a little bit. And not all glass workers prefer to sit a lot, prefer to stand to get uh, some extra mobility, some extra reach around the torch, which I'm going to have to do here to get the angles I need to finish up these bridges. And that will do it for this video. The glass science sign is complete and it's looking awesome. If you've been enjoying what you've been seeing so far, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you'll see what's coming up next.